we have the parish church here this is the catholic church for blarney and blarney village Today we will be looking at Blarney Castle Garden and Castle. I'll be giving a brief history along with a narration and tour of this castle and gardens. Sit back and enjoy. So why Blarney Castle? Well first, let's describe what a castle is. A castle was a strategic military building and the first consideration had to be the location of the site. Castles were always built on elevated sites in order to give a clear view of the surrounding countryside from all points, north, south, east, and west. This was a vital necessity to give the defenses an early warning of approaching danger. Everything outside and inside the castle was designed to give protection in the supreme hour of crisis when the enemy appeared outside the walls. Blarney Castle is built on an elevated outcrop of solid limestone rock. It's sufficiently strong to give a firm foundation. Blarney Castle would have been surrounded by a defensive wall which enclosed an area of about eight acres called the Bon. Within the sheltered walls of Blarney, there would be a hive of activity. You would find blacksmiths, masons, woodcutters, carpenters, and livestock keepers. Yes, and that means livestock as well. You would find horses, cows, pigs, and poultry. The walls at the house are 18 feet thick to withstand any attempt to break through. The slit windows on the upper portions would stop arrows or stones penetrating inside. The battlements at the top allowed the defenders to pour boiling water, tar, and stones down on the heads of the enemy at ground level. The walls at Blarney at the base gradually slope inwards as they rise. This makes the building more stable but would also have helped with defense. When an object was dropped from the top, it would bounce off the wall on the way down and fly outwards into the enemy. In April of 1703, Blarney was sold to the governor of Cork City, Sir James Jeffries. It was the Jeffries family who had the 17th century house attached to the castle, almost entirely demolished and in its place built a Georgian Gothic house of grand proportions. James St. John Jeffreys, the grandson of the first Sir James, inherited the castle at the age of six in 1739. He was one of the principal introducers of the Industrial Revolution to Cork, Ireland. You're looking at the Great Hall. This room lies underneath the pointed vault rendered with plaster work. The plaster rendering has fallen away over the years, which reveals the original construction of this vaulted ceiling. In 1846, Louisa Jane Jeffries married a neighbor, Sir George Colthurst of Ardrum, just west of Blarney, and the Blarney estate passed to the Colthurst family, but they didn't return to Blarney until 1874 when they built a new Scottish baronial mansion a few hundred yards south of the castle overlooking Blarney Lake. For all of Blarney's welcoming intentions today, castles were designed to keep people out, not to let them in. A narrow staircase can be more easily defended as attackers can advance only one at a time. A defender's axe or sword can not only repel, but cause the wounded opponent to fall back on his companion. Height, as in all aspects of the tower house, was definitely an enormous advantage. When you walk into Blarney Castle, there was a great iron gateway with its interlaced bars. The visitor now has the experience of stepping into Blarney Castle. Besides the guard room, 
there were two features in the small entrance lobby illustrating that point. The first thing was a spy hole through which all visitors could be scrutinized from within. More deadly is the murder hole, which was overhead. The stone slab, when removed, left an opening through which an undesirable intruder would be attacked with a pike, sword, or boiling tar or water underneath. The 99 steps to climb up Blarney are steep stairs. They include a rope to grab onto, so it was definitely difficult for any intruder to make it to the top. The term Blarney, meaning misleading talk, gained currency during the 16th century as the McCarthy of the day attempted to fend off the demands of Queen Elizabeth I. The Blarney Stone is that of legend, and there are many legends, each as plausible as the next. One is said to have been the stone used by Jacob as a pillow when he dreamed of a ladder extending up to heaven with angels ascending and descending on it. The stone was brought from the Holy Land after the Crusades. A further legend tells us that Cormac McCarthy, the builder of the earliest part of the castle, rescued an old woman from drowning in a lake. The woman turned out to be a witch, and witches could not cross over water. In gratitude, she told him of a certain stone already in the castle that had magical properties and that he could benefit by kissing it. However, the most elaborate and romantic legend concerns the Queen of the Fairies in South Munster, who was the beautiful daughter of a leading druid. She fell in love with a gallant young man who broke her heart by not returning her love. He was killed in battle, and she found his body on a stone on the banks of the River Lee, just south of Blarney. His blood had soaked through the stone. There she grieved, her tears joining his blood in the stone, which she continually kissed. This caused her magical powers to be absorbed by the stone itself. A further version of the legend tells us that Cormac McCarthy, being troubled by some intransigent problem, was advised by the Queen of the Fairies that this stone on which she had wept had been built into the castle and that if he kissed it, his difficulties would be resolved. And so it was. Cormac therefore had the stone taken to the top of Blarney, where it is to be found today. Whatever its origins, the powers of the Blarney Stone, the Stone of Eloquence, are unquestioned. The bell tower is midway along the top of the eastern battlements. The north pilaster supporting the arch is built on top of a chimney stack that served the fireplace in the great hall you saw before. As you could see, these steps are narrow. They are numerous, and the space feels confining. But if you're determined to have the gift of eloquence, climb up, challenge yourself, kiss the Blarney Stone. When you visit Blarney Castle, you'll have the experience that a lot of people don't know, the gardens. The gardens of Blarney Castle are beautiful. I would suggest at least two hours to explore these beautiful, green, lush gardens, which are full of flowers, plants, waterfalls, and lots of cute critters. You may even stumble across a beautiful manor house, which is one of Blarney's neighbors, and I did stumble across it, and you'll see it in this video as well. Stick around because the gardens are really beautiful. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief history and my tour of Blarney Castle and the stone. If you have, give me a like. 
please feel free to comment or ask me any questions. And don't forget to click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Take care and thanks for watching.
Did you kiss it? <laughs>